Well, God bless you tonight. Thank you for taking out the time to join us for another Tuesday night teaching. We praise and thank God for each and every one of you. We're blessed, amen, as we have entered into this holiday season. Praise God. We certainly trust and hope, amen, that you're being safe and you're being very careful. Uh, amen, praise God, because this is the season, as the song said, tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la, and all that good stuff. Amen. We thank and praise God, amen, for this nice lesson. Amen. And thank and praise God for each and every one of you. Let's begin with the word of prayer. Father, we thank you on tonight. We thank you for everything and all things. God, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. We look unto you tonight, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. God, we pray tonight that you will bless us, that you would help us, God, increase our understanding. And we should give you praise, glory, and honor for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. In a man. Tonight we're dealing with chapter 10. Amen. I'm waiting on my clock, man, to get my clock started. Praise God. So we can, amen. There we go. Amen. So I know how long I'm talking. Praise God. Sometimes people try to make you talk longer than what you want to talk and they push you. Praise God and what have you. But amen. We're happy tonight. Amen. Whatever the Lord is saying. Let's go to chapter 10 uh, devotional Bible study. Devotional Bible study. Chapter 10. And in chapter 10, you can find it on our website, www.ztministriestn.com. Again, it's www.ztministriestn.com. And that will certainly, amen, you'll be able to go to that particular website. Um, down this lesson in which we're talking about, amen, and just follow right along with us. Devotional Bible study. What is devotional Bible study? Upon completion of this chapter, uh, we want you to be able to write the key verse down from memory, list the steps of the devotional Bible uh, study method, and also do a devotional Bible study. Now, devotional Bible study, as I pointed out in times past, studying is more than reading. Again, studying, you cannot study without reading. You cannot study without reading. However, Studying encompasses more than just reading. You have to pray for an understanding. Every time I get ready to study God's word, I pray, Lord, give me an understanding of what I'm getting ready to read. And sometimes I have to go back and read stuff four or five times before I really have a good understanding of what it is I've read. So studying, praise God, studying encompasses more than just reading. So Psalms 119 and 148 says this, mine eyes prevent the night watches, that I might meditate in thy word. The first method of Bible study, which you will learn, is called the devotional method. The chapter in which we're going through now is going to define, explain, and present an example of devotional Bible study. When you get to the for, for, for further study section, it provides an opportunity for you to apply that which you've learned by actually doing devotional study. The method defined. The devotional method gets its name from the word devotion, which means dedication, consecration, worship, and sincere attachment to a cause or person. The devotional method of Bible study increases dedication and consecration to God. It leads to worship in a deeper personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. This method involves not only uh, study of God's word, but also the application of his truths. It is against this method that Satan raises his greatest opposition. Satan is not concerned about study just to gain knowledge. So you can read all day, but if you don't study and you don't gain any knowledge, amen, then he, the devil don't care about that. But when you begin to gain knowledge, then you're able to know the tactics in the words of the devil. Because the Bible says this, well, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. How can you not become ignorant of Satan's devices? You don't become ignorant of Satan's devices simply when you study the word of God. The devil ain't got no new tricks. He just got old tricks. Let me say that again. The devil ain't got no new tricks. He just got old tricks. He used the same tricks, the same methods of deception that he's always used. He tempt man with different things. It's the same temptation. Therefore, the temptation is not new to Satan, but the temptation is new to you because you've never been tempted in that manner before. 
But the devil has always used that temptation with man. And you've got to understand that the devil will attack you and tempt you in three different areas. Three different areas. He will attack, number one, your flesh. He'll, he'll attack your flesh. You know, he, 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 he want to make sure he's going to attack your flesh. If you fasten, he's going he, he to tempt you to eat. Not only that, he'll attack you, uh, amen, you know, again in your flesh. He'll attack you with the opposite sex. He'll attack you with, in, a, in an area of pride. You become too proudful, too boastful, and not humble enough. He'll attack you like that. And then he'll attack you to make him your God and to fall down and worship him. He used those tactics with Jesus. That's why the scripture says this. We have not a high priest which cannot be tempted, but he was at all points tempted just as we were, but yet he was without sin. So the devotional method gets his name from the word devotional dedication, which means consecration, worship, and sincere attachment to a cause or person. The scripture says this, be, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work. This man, that's what the scripture said, this man shall be blessed in his deed. You will learn many methods of Bible study in this course that we're about to go over, uh, which should result in that, and you want to use it, you want to apply what we're saying. Okay, let's talk about it. Step one, record the passage information. Record the name and book in which the passage you're studying is found. Then record the chapter and verse numbers you have selected to study. So I can pick up, I can pick up uh, a particular book. Let's, let, let's, let's just let's say, let's, let me get my Bible here. Let's just pick one arbitrarily. Let's go, uh, let's go to Psalms 1. Let's go to Psalms 1. Let's see what Psalms 1 said. Even though we know it, you know, from memory. But let's see what Psalms 1 say. Amen. Amen. I'm getting there. Wait a minute. I know I know what Psalms is. Hold up now. Wait. Amen. Praise God. As much as I read my Bible, I can't find Psalms. The devil is a lie. I got it, y'all. I got it. Okay. <laughs> Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Now, I want to take this and I want to study it. Who am I, what am I studying? I'm, 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 I'm looking for the traits. I'm looking for the characteristics in a blessed man. And I'm looking for the results of a man who walked like God want him to walk. So then I begin to study. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So I understand what a man is, and I understand what walk means. But what is the counsel of the ungodly? So I, be I begin to break down the word counsel. I underline counsel, the ungodly. So what, I, what, what do it mean that they don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly? That means I don't take advice from the wicked man. I, uh, 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 the person that, that's not saved, the person that don't know Jesus, the person that's not acknowledging Christ. So I got to break that down. And then he said, not only that, but then he goes on further to say, nor standeth in the way of sinners. So, so I understand that some of the characteristics of a blessed man here, number one, he don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Number two, he don't stand in the way of sinners. Number three, he does not, seat in, he does not sit in the seat of the scornful. That's why I understand what a blessed man is. So I'm writing all these things down. Okay, so let me look up ungodly. Let me look up the way of, the, the way of sinners. And let me look up sitting, up sitting in the seat of scornful. And when I begin to look up all those things, how am I going to look them up? What am I looking up? Remember now, we've, we, 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 we've talked about how do we use the concordance? How do we use the Bible dictionary? How do we use the commentary? So I then pull those resources. And if I don't have a, if I don't have a concordance, if I don't have a Bible dictionary, 
Uh, if I don't have a commentary, what did I tell you to do? I take my telephone or I take my computer and I begin to Google. I'm going to Google, okay, the counsel of the ungodly. And when I start Googling counsel of the ungodly, all kind of scriptures will pop up. When I start Googling the way of sinners, passages will pop up. Not only will passages come up, articles will come up. And I read that. That's what studying is. That's what I'm breaking it down. I don't just do it by myself. But it's two or three of us that's doing it. And what do we come up with? We come up with, okay, what did you come up with for the counsel of the ungodly? What did you come up with, you know, for the scornful? What did you come up with, you know, for the way, standing in the way of sinners? Everybody's going to come up with something different. And what they're saying is true because there's more than one way to look at a particular thing. So now I'm in my, I, I, I'm, I'm in my, I'm in my devotion. I'm in my devotional Bible study. Now I'm taking out the time, not just to read the word, not just to rush through it, not just to say, I read my verse for the day. You got to get past reading your verse for the day. You need to read whatever passage that you're going to read and not just read it for the day, but understand this. When you read it for the day, the hour, whatever, hey, it's going to take me through what I got to go through. It's going to take me through what I'm dealing with. Amen. Because there are, some, there are some experiences in life that I've got to go through. There are some things in life that I've got to deal with that only God can help me. And if God don't help me, I'll be messed up. Hello? Oh, my God. So thank God. Thank God. So that's how I begin. Then I identify the subject. I've identified the subject. I've identified my key verse. And then I begin to summarize it. I, I, I told you what main points have been covered in this Psalm 1, and I only got past, I only got to verse 1 and 2. And you do that for every verse. And when you do that for every verse, you are then really studying the Word of God. You're not just reading it, but you're studying the Word of God. You're breaking it down, line upon line, precept upon precept. I'm breaking it down. And then after I've done all of those things, then I meditate. What do you mean meditate? When you meditate on God's Word, the word meditate means to think, dwell on, and ponder. So I'm thinking on what God has said. I'm thinking on the word of God. I'm dwelling on it, and I'm pondering it. And after you select the Bible portion to study, identify its subject in the key verse, and summarize its teachings, then meditate on that passage. Yes. God, give me, give me, give me an understanding of this. Yeah. yeah I, I, I'm meditating on this. Blessed is the man. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man. I'm meditating on this. Is in my heart. We used to sing this song. It's in my heart. This melody of joy divine is in my heart. I am his and he is mine. God told Joshua to meditate on his word was the key to success. And Joshua 1 and 8 said, This book of the law should not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shall thou make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. And then step, step six, what do we do? We need to make an application. We need to start applying it. Now you're ready to apply what you've learned during meditation. Application is when you personally apply to your life in ministry the truth that you've learned. Sometimes you cannot immediately apply everything you learn, but you, begin, you can begin to apply all that you learn all you can. God will help you apply the truth of the word even if it means you've got to take some baby steps or small steps, one step at a time. He's going to help you do that. Amen. And once he begins to help you do that, the following question will help, you, will help you apply God's word to your life. Is there an example to follow in this portion of scripture? Is there an error or sin which should be avoided? What duty do I have to perform? From this scripture, what promise is there for me to claim from what I just read? What relationship can I develop? And what changes do I need to make? And really, friend, you, 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 you just can't read the word of God and not apply it and make the appropriate changes in your life. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The word of God will cause you to bring about a change in your life. You can't stay the same. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. 
he gives us a newness of life. He gives us something we no longer have to worry about. Let's look at this. Example of a devotional method. I gave you one example. Let me give you another one. Let's look at uh, Galatians 5. And, you know, we want to talk about the works of the flesh and, and, and the fruit of the Spirit. We identified a key verse, Galatians 5 and 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And then we summarize it. What do you mean? Works of the flesh and fruit of the Spirit. The flesh lusts against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. Those who live in the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God. Fleshly works include adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, various immolations, wrath, strife, and seditions. And it goes on to give a whole list of it. Then it gives us the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, judgment, and goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And it tells us what are we to do to avoid the works of the flesh and to walk in the Spirit. What are we to do? And it gives us how we ought to do it. And then we begin to pray, Lord, help me. Help me not to give in to my flesh. Lord, help me to display the fruit of the Spirit. Lord, help me. Mm -hmm. Lord, help, because, you know, I, I want to display love. I don't want to display no hurt, hate. I want to be able to love my enemies, to love those who mistreat me, to love those who abuse me. Yes, we meditate, beloved. We make application. We learn, how, we learn what to avoid. We learn what not to do. We do all these things. And then we are pleasing to God. We want to be good soldiers, pleasing the Lord. And then we flip over to the next chapter, book study. How do we begin? What books do we begin to study? Psalm 119 and 9 says this, Wherewith also a young man cleanse his way. How, how can he do that? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. I've got to take heed to the word of God. That's the only way I can cleanse my way. That's the only way I can get right. That's the only way I can be right. I've got to take heed to what I'm doing. That's why the son said, I said I take heed to my ways, that I sin not with my tongue. I put a bridle on my mouth while the wicked is before me. He said, I'm going to deal with me. You, beloved, when you begin to study God's word and begin to study this book, you will find you. The word of God causes you to find you. It don't cause you to find everybody else. It causes you to find you. And when you find you, you don't find the right one. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I want, I want, I want, I want to find me. Amen. I don't just want to just read through and, 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 and think it's talking to everybody else. No, because he's talking to me too. So, we're going to learn how to survey the entire book of the Bible. We're going to learn how to create a chart and an outline to summarize the studies that we've done. An example of the book study method is going to be included. We're going to give you the opportunity to do the first further study section. What is the method? A book study is important because the chapters, paragraphs, verses, and words of the books must be interpreted in proper context. A book study provides uh, knowledge of this context. Explanation of the method. Here are three steps to help us study the book of the Bible. One is an initial survey. The second is a book study chart. And the third step is a book outline. I prefer, you know, I use the book outline. I go to the book outline before anything. Uh, you know, that's just me. I outline the book. I outline, you know, even in my sermons, when I preach, I outline my sermons. I outline them. You know why? I, because that's just the way I learn better with outline because I understand that there's some important points that I want to make. Now, there may be some sub points that I make under each numerical out, each, each Roman numeral. There are some other points I want to make, but I want to outline. If I make a point, I want to prove it with the word of God. I, I give you one or two scriptures behind what I'm saying just to validate that what I'm saying is not something I just pulled out the air, but this is something that I've studied. This is something that I've researched. And I know what I'm talking about. Amen. So we look at the outline. And what, what, what is, amen, 
How do we, let, let's look at the uh, Philippians. Get your Bibles. Get your Bibles. Let's, let's look at the book of Philippians. All right. So when we look at the book of Philippians, I know we've gone through two books tonight. That's all right. We may go through three before it's over with. Uh, when we look at the book of Philippians, look at this. So we, we selected Philippians. The theme for the book of Philippians is uh, Christian unity. The author of the book is the Apostle Paul. The book was written to the Christians in the church city of Philippi. And then the general purpose of the book, it was twofold. It was to thank the Philippians for their support of his ministry and then appeal for Christian unity. The key words were to rejoice, joy, uh, the key verses, Philippians 2 and 2. And then we have the characters, the main persons of the book. And then we do the book study chart. Who's the, book, who, who, who's the author of the book? We know Paul was. And he wrote to the believers at Philippi. Why did he write to them? To thank them for the support and the appeal for Christian unity. Yeah, he, he, wanted to th he said, listen, y'all been good to me. Y'all have supported me in ministry. And I want to thank you and appreciate everything you've done. Then he said, I want you to rejoice and joy. Uh, and then he gives the character. And then when you do that, you know, he's able, we're able to come up with an outline for that particular book. Now, you can find the outline for any book, any book of the Bible. Amen. All you got to do is research. You can find the outline for any book of the Bible, and it truly breaks it down. Some of the Bibles that you have, if you have a um, dates, I have a dates, I have a Thompson chain, you know, um, amplified version of the Bible. I got the Messenger Bible. And dates really give a good outline. Dates give an outline of what happened, the time frame, the period, what the message was about, and all of that. And that's how we're able, you know, to give messages that make sense, to give messages that have substance. And, and, and beloved, that's what we need. We, we, we need substance nowadays, you know. We got a whole lot of things, but we need substance. You don't, you don't just need to come to church and shout and feel good and go back home. You need substance. You need something that's going to help you to get through whatever it is that you're going through to help you with your life. Amen. Somebody go to church, oh, pastor show preach. The preacher show did preach. Okay, what did he preach about? Oh, no, but he showed preach. It sounded good. Preaching is more than a sound. Preaching is more than a sound. Preaching is to expound upon the word of God, to convince men, women to turn their life to Christ. If I'm not convincing people to turn their lives to Christ, if I'm not convincing you to develop a stronger and a closer walk with the Lord, then I have defeated my entire purpose for ministry, pastoral ministry in particular. I've defeated that purpose, and now I need God to help me, to give me a message for ministry. Oh, to give me a message for people that's going to help you with what you're going through. Amen. Because whether you believe it or not, we have some serious issues in life. We have life issues that we have to deal with. And, and, and you can't get through life issues, amen, just on a song and a dance. You need more than a song and a dance to go through life issues. And the only thing that can help you with that, beloved, you've got to study God's word. Again, whatever you've gone through, whatever you're going through in life, let me tell you something. You can find an answer for it in the word of God. Now, we've gone through Bible study. We've gone through book study. Let's deal with chapter study. We start studying different chapters. Amen. Again, we take the same method that we have applied in our previous discussions. We select the title. We mark the paragraph division, create a chapter study chart, create a chapter outline. Uh, and after we select the title, then we go from there. And we're able to come to some conclusion that can truly help us. And beloved, that's what we need nowadays. We need some help. We need some help, 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 help. We need help in everything that we're going through. We need help. Amen. And let's look at the chapter study dealing with uh, did it in the book of Jude. Let's look at Jude 1. Well, I said Jude 1. Really, Jude, Jude ain't got but one chapter. <laughs> Why did I say Jude 1? You know, uh, maybe I got carried away. Let's look at Jude. Let's look at Jude. Okay. When we look at Jude, Jude gives the greeting. He gives the greeting in, 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 one, in verses 1 and 2. 
Then he goes on, you know, he tells us who it's from. Uh, this is Jude, your brother, right? I'm the brother of James, bond servant of Jesus Christ. And then he said, I've been sanctified, I've been preserved, and I've been called. He gives us an introduction of who he is. He tells us the purpose of his right. Then he talks about certain men. He, he begins to deal with certain men, how certain men have crept in unaware, how certain men are doing some things that they should not be doing. He, he, he gives us this information. And then he gives us the historical records of things that have happened. And then he talks about the false teachers that have come out. And he breaks down the false teachers. Then he talks about, uh, you know, speak evil of dignities. Uh -huh. Then he talks about the description of these evil men by example. He break, I mean, it's broken down for us. So what are you saying? I'm saying that in your Bible, whatever Bible you have, uh, if it's a Dakes or Thompson chain, it gives you an outline of that particular chapter. It gives you an outline of that particular book. And it tells you everything that is discussed. And you go back and you read it. Okay. And, and sometimes, you know, you have to read it in a different version other than the King James version. You have to read it in an amplified version. You have to read it in a messenger version. You have to read it in a different version in order to get a good understanding of whatever it is that you're reading. And we, we talked about the different books, the different versions of the Bible. We talked about that in, our, in an earlier presentation. But he goes on to talk about all of these things in the book. And this chapter is broken down for our learning. And then he began, we can begin to ask questions. You know, you want to know, well, who was Enoch? Who was, you know, why, how is Jane related to him? When you start asking yourself questions, and then you start answering those questions with the Word of God, relevance from the Word of God, not just something I'm making up, but I'm doing it from the Word of God, then I'm able, y'all, I'm able, amen, I am able to do what the Lord has told me. I'm able to develop a closer walk in a relationship with the Lord. Y'all remember the song, Deacon Tate, you sing, just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus, if you please, daily walk and close with thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. And so, beloved, I just encourage you on tonight. Let's take God's word. Let's study God's word. Let's take these books, break them down. Let's just not read just for the sake of passing time, but let's study the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee, O God. The Bible is not meant for you to argue over. Even in Sunday school, whatever Sunday school lesson we're discussing, it ain't meant for us to argue over, amen. But it's meant for us to have an interactive discussion. Not argue about it, but let's... You should never argue about God's word. Amen. You don't argue about the scripture. The scripture is what, it's, what it is. And I told you the meaning a little while uh, earlier, you know, in, in an earlier lesson, we know what literal means. It, it, it literally means what it says. I told you what that means. Amen. I told you exactly what it means. And we have to use God's word in everything that we do. Well, tonight, I certainly hope I've said something to encourage your hearts on tonight. At this time, we're going to pause to see if there are any questions about this lesson. Well, we hope you had some questions on tonight. If you didn't, praise God. Uh, maybe you have some next time. We hope that you're enjoying this holiday season. Uh, praise God. Again, we emphasize to you uh, the importance of safety. Be aware of your surroundings. Look around you, see everything that's happening, be aware of what's going on, uh, amen, you know, and, 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 and be cautious, don't overspend, uh, but do what you can, amen. Enjoy Christmas, and always remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. We thank and praise God for you. We thank God for this lesson, praise God, and we look forward to continuing to share God's word with you. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you now. We thank you for this holiday season. We thank you for your people. God, we praise and magnify you on today. It is our prayer, Lord, that you continue to bless us and help us, God, and give us the strength that we need. Father, we pray for those who are less fortunate than us at this hour. We pray for those who are incarcerated, those who are in hospitals, those who are going through a suffering with sickness or illness in their life. We pray that you will lift up their head and encourage their hearts on today. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the victory now. 
We pray your continued help, God, and your love shine ever upon us in Jesus' name. And we'll forever give you all praise, all glory, and all honor. For these and other blessings are we asking upon tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. Well, friends, be sure to join us in our next lesson. Same time, same place. Until then, be blessed is my prayer for you. And Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. God bless. Thank you for watching Zion Temple Ministries. Be sure to tune in to worship with us via Facebook Live and YouTube each Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. on Facebook Live Stream and every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. for our Tuesday night teaching Bible study. You can also check out our worship opportunities by visiting our website at www.ztministriestn.com. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you soon.